I'm Alan Nellis. We've all had situations that got out of control in our library. Patrons can become angry, destroy property, or even threaten us with bodily harm. As a longtime mental health worker, I receive yearly training on crisis response and prevention. In my work with public library staff as part of these trainings, I found that many of them have no or little concept of how to deal with crisis in a calm and prepared way. Now, I can't offer you a full training today, but I can give you some tips and pointers on how to deal with a patron who's angry, upset, and potentially quite dangerous. I'd like to make it very clear that this particular module of the training has nothing to do with a patron's mental health status or developmental disability. These techniques are applicable to any situation where the patron's becoming angry and things can get out of hand. Now, crisis may seem to just appear out of the blue, but it actually has a continuum, much like the storyline of a movie or book. I'd like to talk today about one kind of continuum of crisis description, known as the stress model of crisis. As you can see, a potential crisis situation is initiated by a triggering event or critical incident. A triggering event is any incident that the patron feels is a threat to their well-being, whether it is real or imagined. Their physical well-being may have been disrupted. They may be suffering more mental stress than is bearable to them. Perhaps some event has happened that contradicts a deeply held core belief of theirs. Or there could have been a change in their material circumstances. One of the most common types of triggering events in any place is when someone doesn't get what they want and they have the expectation of receiving it. Well, we certainly know this is a common cause of a triggering event in the library because patrons often become upset that materials are either unavailable or don't exist that they were expecting to receive. Another common triggering event is when someone feels misunderstood or disrespected. This feeling can come either from an interaction with you as a library staff or another customer. A patron who feels disrespected will begin to look at the personal side of things more and concentrate on their own feelings and their perception of your feelings rather than the situation at hand. An occasional cause might be an actual physical event such as a thunderstorm, a fire alarm, or a library cart crashing down the stairs. At any rate, these type of events are fairly easily observed by an alert library staff person. There are other types of triggering events that are not easily observed, however. These would include the mentally ill person who is responding to eternal stimulus, such as voices in their head. Someone might enter our library who's in great physical pain because of an illness. Someone may come into the library who's just suffered a job loss or gone through a divorce. We may not see these, but they can be triggering events for the patron described. At any rate, the event may not seem significant at all to us, or it may even seem positive in tone. As Shakespeare once said, there is nothing either bad nor good, but thinking makes it so. Once the trigger has been pulled, the potential for crisis has been created. We now enter the next phase of our stress model of crisis, the escalation phase. Escalation is the, our best chance to diffuse and avoid a potentially dangerous situation. Now let's look at some of the signs of escalation and see if we can develop some effective responses to them. We can also start looking at how to protect our own personal safety as a crisis situation escalates. The most common sign of escalation is raising one's voice or beginning to shout. The person may coarsen their vocabulary and begin to swear. They may start to make accusatory statements such as, you're the reason I'm not getting what I want. At the same time, we'll notice physical changes. Some might have increased muscle tension or shake. Some people might get red in the face. Most people will cease to observe the common amount of personal space that's used in public. They might get right in our face and point their finger at us. Increased movements are very common, such as clenched fists, flailing the arms. But conversely, a person who's normally fairly active may freeze in space and stare intently at the object of their anger. We all know persons who come into our library and seem to be carrying their anger with them and are actively searching or looking for a trigger. However, in some instances, escalation may be much more difficult to observe. Some people do what's known as a slow burn, 
or have still waters that run deep. These folks can jump to a very high level of escalation with little warning. Now, let's look at our response to escalation, and I'd like to divide that into two areas of importance, physical and verbal. When someone is becoming angry or out of control, it triggers our own autonomic nervous fight or flight response. As library employees, we need to learn how to control this response. The last thing we'd ever want to do is jump right into the fight response. Getting in a shouting match with a patron or becoming aggressive with them will never help defuse a situation. We need to try to remain poised and calm. This facilitates assertive communication. Turn at an angle. Maintain eye contact, but an open stance. We don't want to cross our arms, put our hands on our hips, and of course, we'd never turn our back on someone who was angry, would we? Try to remember that your body language is a form of communication. If we appear fearful or aggressive, it's broadcast to everyone in the area. Neither will facilitate de-escalating an angry person. Now, at this point, you should be very cognizant of your own personal space. Try to keep a full leg's length between you and the patron. If possible, put a barrier such as a table or a desk between the two of you. At any rate, always know your escape route from anywhere in the library. Don't get backed into a corner. Be aware of where your coworkers are and what they're doing. This seems like a good spot to talk about what we should do when one of our coworkers is in a potential crisis situation. Don't assume, just because they're calm, that they are in control of the situation. They may be totally missing the point and not see the impending crisis coming while you do. Move closer to the situation and give it your full attention. You may decide to assist in the interaction. In such a case, try to remember some of the techniques and tools we're giving you in this training today. Probably the biggest decision you have to make is whether to contact emergency personnel or law enforcement. This should be done with a good knowledge of your library's policies. However, at the end of the day, you have to use your own good sound judgment. It's better to be safe than sorry. In some situations, you may feel that other patrons are threatened and decide to use your skill to move them out of the area. Now let's talk about our verbal response to escalating behavior. The guidelines are much the same as they were with our physical response. We certainly don't want to become angry with a patron in the library, and yet we wouldn't do to sound timid or afraid either. We should speak to patrons in a calm, yet always respectful manner. Now the number one thing we can do to help de-escalate a patron verbally is to ask them how they want the problem solved. If they give a vague or angry response, rephrase the question and ask again. Encourage the patron to tell you exactly what their problem is. When we're interacting with patrons, we want to validate their feelings. And I think it's a lot better to do this through empathy rather than sympathy. We want to show that we understand the situation from the patron's point of view. Let me give you an example. Say a patron's becoming upset because they have to leave the computer before they finished what they wanted to do. If I were to sympathize with that patron, I might say, gee, I'm sorry that you have to get off the computer. The county ought to buy us more. This doesn't offer a solution. Now, if I empathize with the patron, I might make a statement such as this. I understand how frustrated you are that you didn't finish what you were working on before your computer time was up. Perhaps I could sign you up for the next available time. Another technique that can sometimes be valuable is distracting or diverting the patron from the object of what's making them upset. Now, in this example, maybe a patron's getting upset because all the new Stephen King novel copies that were available had been checked out. And once again, they didn't receive what they expected. Well, I might suggest other horror authors that they would enjoy that are brand new books, and if that didn't work, I might say, well, you know, Stephen King's written a lot of books. Would you like to see them all and see if you've read them all? Sometimes this is useful. Don't be afraid to point out to the patron where they are. They're in the library venue, and there are expectations of behavior in a public place. 
However, it won't help to bossily read library policy or remind the patron of rules. If they cared about that, they wouldn't be upset. You should try to address your statements to the personal and particular situation that you find yourself and the patron in. For example, I might say, Sir, if you could only lower your voice a bit and speak more slowly, perhaps I'd understand you better and I could resolve your problem. As I said before, the escalation phase represents our best chance to defuse a potentially dangerous situation. Don't be afraid to intervene quickly. Hopefully, the assertive physical and verbal techniques we've talked about will help you stabilize the situation and facilitate understanding between you and the patron. Always remember, your top priority should be to find some way to solve the problem in an acceptable manner for the patron. You should also try to interact in a way that helps the patron regain their self-control and achieve acceptable norms of behavior. Sometimes our best efforts will be fruitless and a full-blown crisis situation will occur. It can involve personal threats, property destruction, or even assault. The first thing we need to do at this point is call the appropriate emergency personnel or law enforcement agency if this has not yet been done. Our main concern should be for our personal safety and those around us and protecting ourselves. In a full-blown crisis, communication should and can continue. I have a handy rule for verbal communication in a crisis situation. It's called the rule of five. Our sentences should be no more than five words long, and the words we use should contain no more than five letters. Examples would be, sir, you need to leave, or Jim, put down that chair. Although these communications may seem to have little effect, if nothing else, they show the person that we are still somewhat in control of ourselves. You'll notice there's one more phase in our continuum of crisis. It's the recovery and post-crisis phase. If a person was successfully de-escalated and a crisis did not occur, everyone involved should congratulate themselves. It's a good idea to discuss which techniques were effective. Assertive communication becomes easier with practice. If a full-blown crisis did occur and emergency personnel were called to the scene, it is their and other professionals' responsibility to deal with the patron's post-crisis recovery needs. However, you shouldn't ever minimize the trauma that the crisis might have caused for you and your coworkers. Don't be afraid to seek help for dealing with the feelings and fears that the incident might have created in you. If you don't deal with them, your ability to deal with crisis in the future could be seriously impaired. Now let's look at a couple of situations that could occur in our libraries and see if our responses could be improved by using what we've learned. Here's a book I had that's due. I'm not done with it yet, so recheck it out for me. Oh, sir, I'm sorry. This book is on hold, and according to the library policy 777.3, we have to keep this and give it to the next patron. What do you mean I can't have it today? Listen, lady, I've got some major investments planned based upon what's in this book. Besides, I've already told you, I'm not done with it yet. Is there something wrong with you? Can't you hear? Well, yes, I can hear just fine. Can't you hear? I have to keep this book. We have to be fair to all patrons. I'm really getting pissed off by all this crap. I never, never, never should have come in here. I've got to have that book. You need to hand it over to me. Get used to it. I'll show you something, you stupid old bag. Let's look at what just happened. First, I don't feel the library worker was communicating assertively. Both her physical and verbal responses show that she was dealing with her own anger and becoming somewhat aggressive. Did you notice the co-worker who walked through the scene? She was totally oblivious to what was going on. And in the final analysis, is a book worth going to the mat over? Now let's see how the situation could have been handled differently. There's a book I got that's due. I'm not done with it yet, so 
recheck it out for me. Well, I'm sorry, sir, but this book is on hold. That means we'll have to give it to the next patron on the list, but we could put you on the list and you can have it in two weeks. What are you going to put me on a hold list for? That ain't going to work. I've got some big investment plans based upon that book. Didn't you hear me? I'm not done with it. I gotta have it. Is there something wrong with you? Can't you hear? I understand this book is important to you. Is there any other book like this that we could find and I could get for you? No, no, no. I could frickin' care less about another book, another patron, nothing. Dang it. Dang it. Dang it. Dang it. Every time I come into this library, I get jerked around. I pay taxes. I want my money's worth. Dang. I realize that library policies are hard to understand sometimes, but we try to use them to make them fair to everyone. Is there anything else I can help you with? I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to kick everybody's ass in this damn library, and I'm going to start with yours. Take the book. About time. What's going on here? This time, our library worker made some attempt to validate the patron's feelings. Didn't help much. The co-worker was quite alert and became involved in the situation in an appropriate way by calling emergency personnel. In the final analysis, the worker understood that the book simply wasn't worth getting in a huge altercation about. She used the rule of five to return the book to the patron. Now, let's look at another situation. All right, yeah. I'm on my way to level four. Hey, librarian, that guy over there, he's being loud. He's so loud I can't even hardly get on the computer. Is there anything that you can do about that? Well, I'm sorry, I don't like those games either. I just wish we didn't have them. My time is valuable. Can you go over there and do something about this? Well, I guess I can come over now. Boom! Hey, this is great. Hey, you're going to have to quiet down. This man's trying to do something useful. What are you talking about? Useful? This helps me to relax. And if you don't like playing these games, why do you even have them on the computer? Well, frankly, I wish we didn't. I think they're a complete waste of time. Hey, I got 30 minutes on this thing, and if you don't like it, you just go fly a kite. If she won't shut you up, maybe I should. Maybe I should just turn this machine off. Hey, who made you king? Well, I just don't know what to say. I wish we could just go back to the good old days where people just sat quietly and read books. Can't you two just get along? Hey, I don't have any problems. No, you are the problem and you need to get out of here. Here I am, all by myself, and this happens. You two just work it out on your own. Huh, how about that? <laughs> hey, hey you hold up with my papers there. What kind of behaviors did our library worker exhibit in this situation? At first, she seemed timid and annoyed. When she finally began interacting with the patrons, she showed a lot of sympathy towards one patron, but she didn't really validate either of their feelings. At the end, she just threw up her hands and left, ignoring her responsibility to at least try to communicate and offer a solution. Now let's see if things could go better using some of the techniques we've talked about today. All right, yeah. All right. There we go. I'm on my way to level four. I can't get anything done over there. That guy over there is being loud. I thought the library is supposed to be quiet. Well, sir, I certainly understand that it may be difficult to focus when there is noise in the library. However, um, our libraries are much more active these days, and with computers, there's a variety of things that you can do on the computers. Is there anything that can be done about that? My time is valuable. I have things to do. Well, let's go see how we can resolve this issue. Oh, this is the greatest. Good afternoon, sir. Hi. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Man, this is so relaxed. Good. Well, it really looks like you're enjoying your oh, game man, today. Oh, it's the best. Uh, however, the noise is kind of distracting some of our patients. Hey, I have 30 minutes on this, and I'm going to get the high score today. If she won't shut you up, maybe I should. Or maybe I should just... Hey, who made you off. king? Okay, let's just step back, take a deep breath. I can see you both value your time on the computer. And so, well, sir, one thing that I might suggest is that uh, we have headphones available that you can use uh, to play the video game with. Okay, but I don't lose my chance of getting the high score. I'll still be hearing running his mouth, though. Hey, I wouldn't be loud. Well, sir, I'm sure you weren't meaning to be loud, but I could hear you at the desk. <sighs> 
Okay, but I still want to get my high score. Sir, if you could bear with me for just a moment, I'll get the head and see if that helps. Maybe I can for a little while until you get back. Okay, thank you. Not only did our library worker respond in a calm and poised manner, she attempted to validate the feelings of both patrons involved. Then, she offered a solution that resulted in the successful de-escalation of a potential crisis situation. We've all had situations like these or even more dangerous occur in our libraries. Although, as I pointed out before, this is not a complete training in crisis prevention and response, I do hope that the tips and pointers that I've given you today give you some beginning when bad things happen to good library.